Hi there, I'm Elizabeth with Ellie's Handcrafted Jewelry and welcome to my channel where I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for those looking to learn the art of wire weaving. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create this Tora pendant. Now in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create the frame, how to set a faceted stone and or a round cabochon if you have that instead in the bale, as well as how to create a pretty back. But before we jump into this tutorial, I'd like to share about the new written tutorial, which is now available for sale. And that is the Audra pendant, this one here. And this particular tutorial is a strip weave or component based pendant, which basically means that you create a frame and then build on that frame with woven pieces to secure your stone. And because you're here watching this video, I'd like to share a coupon that gives you 25% off of this tutorial and it will be good for the next 24 hours. Just enter Audra25 at checkout to get 25% off. It's just my way of saying thank you for supporting this channel and making it possible for me to continue to create free content for all of you. Now, if you are curious about this style of weaving, I have created one in one of my free tutorials. I've left the link down below as well as a little card here that you can click on. So if you're interested in learning more about that pendant, you can go there and see the process. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Kazdance for sponsoring this video. Kazdance is a gem seller located in the United States and has a variety of high quality stones. Search by gemstone, shape, size, quality, and more to find the perfect stone for your project. I've left a link in the description below to their website as well as their Facebook page so that you can stay up to date on any new arrivals or sales. The materials you're going to need five segments of 20 gauge wire. I'll show you how to measure those in a moment. You're also going to need 28 gauge wire for weaving. Your choice of stone, so you can have a teardrop, an oval, or a round stone. Um, and this particular design is great for thin stones, so if you have thin stones you don't know what to do with, this will work well. And then finally, some kind of facet if you want to put, or even a uh, round cabochon, if you would like to put one of those in your piece. Otherwise, you can um, weave the veil without it. You're also going to need a ruler, blue tape, and a Sharpie or a pen. All right, so now to get started, I have my stone here and, oops, and my Sharpie as well. And I'm going to grab my tape, place it on the bottom of the stone, bring it up to the top. The same with the other side till they meet on top. Actually, this is more actually on the stone. There we go. Let's see. All right. So now my stone is encompassed there in the tape and I'm just going to mark the top of it. If you're marking an oval, um, you would just mark just above it. As you can see with this particular pendant, there's a little bit of a gap here on top, and I really like that gap there. Um, you don't have to have that there with the oval, but that's just a preference of mine. So that's kind of how I mark the ovals. But with a teardrop, you're just going to go up to the tip. All right, so now that I've marked my wire, or I've marked my blue tape, we're going to mark the wire so we know how far to weave. This is 11 and a half inches. So it's not the straightest at the moment, but I just need to mark the center or uh, mark the sides here. Grab my Sharpie. Now I'm going to mark the ends. End one. And end two. Now we're going to load this up in the spring clamp and start weaving. All right, so we have this loaded up in the spring clamp now. As you can see, everything is level. And we're gonna go ahead and start our little weave. I'm gonna feed my weaving wire here. Zoom this in a little bit. And I'm gonna wrap the weaving wire around the bottom base wire three times to start the weave. If it's just outside the uh, line, that is okay. Now we're going to wrap around the bottom two base wires three times. Careful not to pull your wire too much. You don't want to pull them completely out of place, kind of like what I'm doing here. And up in between those two base wires that we just wove together and around the next set of base wires.
wrap it up three times just like I did with the previous two. And in between those two wires. All right. And then around the next set of base wires, two base wires, three times. And then around the final two base wires at the top three times. So now we've done three around each two up to the, um, <laughs> up to the top. Now we're going to go down doing the same pattern. So down and around next set of base wires times down and around the next set of base wires Down and around the bottom two base wires three times. Now we made our first triangle and we're just going to continue that particular weave until we reach the other side of our mark. All right, so when we get to this point, um, I've completed the weave from one end to the other, and I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off by wrapping the weaving wire around the bottom base wire, or at least the wire you end on, three times to kind of secure it. And then from there, I'm going to grab my stone, and I'm going to start gently curving this up to create the frame. You can see I'm flattening it out and then curving some more. You want to be um, really patient with this process. If you want to, you can bend these out a little bit. These will meet okay, at the top of the frame. I've created the frame and it's not exactly perfect. You can make adjustments as needed. That looks pretty good at this point. Now I'm going to start working on the bale. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and pull and twist off this tail piece from the beginning of the weave. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to straighten out these wires. I'm going to separate these innermost wires a little bit because these are going to be used to um, set our faceted stone. If you don't have a faceted stone, um, I'll show you what to do with that as well. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this weaving wire and I'm going to bring it up and around from the back. See, I went around a wire I didn't want to. All right. So out and back, and we're going to go around these two wires a couple times. Just to secure that together, 
And now we're going to work on the bail. So I'm going to separate these just a tad. Or that I set it up so it's a little easy to weave. And we want it to be at a slight angle because we want to make sure that when we do the version of the figure eight weave, we can set our faceted stone in there. It has a nice place to sit. So I'm bringing that back down and around. All your wires are straight and easy to get around. So now I'm bringing down and around. So around the one. And one time around the next two. Then in between those two wires woven together. Get my wire all tangled up here. Actually, I'm going to move these two wires out of the way. <laughs> you can see better. Alright, so I've gone down and around those. And then in between the two wires. And then around wire one time. And keep running the wire into the camera. Okay, so then around that one time. And once we've done that, let's these wires again. Let's get tangled up again. I'm going to do a figure eight weave. So down and around, out towards the outer wire, and around it one time. Then around the outer two base wires one time. Bringing the wire in between those two wires. And around the next two wires. So, then in between those two woven wires and around the next two wires. In between those two wires. In between the next one, one time. So it's basically a modified sumac weave with a figure eight in the center. Going down and around the other side again. One time. And around the next two. One time. In between those two wires. The next two. And around, and then around the one wire. So there should be four base wires that you are weaving together before you go down and around. Start figure eight, and then back to the other side. Two, three, two. It, scrunch it down. This is what it should look like. And we're just going to go probably another half an inch and then I'll show you what to do from there. All right. So I woven a little less than an inch. This is what it's starting to look like with our beautiful V shape here. And I'm going to grab my little stone and set it in here. And this is going to help kind of give me an idea of where I um, want to start to decrease a little bit for my veil. So this is a five millimeter fasted stone. You can use up to six millimeter, but this is what I have left. And um, so now I like where I'm at. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting that in slightly. About the same amount of distance there. Put it out. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side, just mirroring the other side. Out just a little bit so it's still easier to weave. So and we're just going to go ahead and continue weaving this sumac uh, figure eight weave until we reach the end here. All right. So now we finished the weave for the bale and now it's time to start folding it over. And at this point you can use a pencil, you can use bale making pliers. I'm just going to use my fingers and bend this over and basically bend this in half and make sure there's plenty of room on top where I can still put my stone. Now we're going to start working on the back. So 
myself a little bit more weaving wire here. So move these over and we're gonna start weaving the back portion. So at this point, we're gonna basically repeat the same weave that we did here with our frame. We're gonna wrap around the bottom two base wires three times. Up, around the next set of base wires three times. See where my weaves are here. And in between those base wires and around the top base wires three times. Like so, grab my flat nose pliers and scooch those just a little bit. Okay, so we've wrapped around those, basically repeating that weave. Now we're going to descend and three times. Now the bottom base wire three times. So we've created another triangle. And we're gonna do probably three of those. And I'll show you the next step. All right, so now I have three little triangles. And I'm gonna separate this one wire here towards the inside. And I'm gonna continue weaving this pattern, but just with these three wires. So, Top two base wires three times. And around the bottom two base wires three times. I do that for a little bit. I'm keeping your weaves compressed. Scrunch, 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 and a little bit of compression. And we're going to do that a couple more times. All right, so I've done that a couple more times here. So I have about six um, rotations. Now I'm going to separate the outermost wire, like this. And you can see I've kind of curved around with the weave around the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and create my swirls here. Just so it's a, they're a little bit more out of the way. Turning that off a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna turn it off a little bit more. And then here, I'm gonna create another swirl. Now I'm going to continue weaving, but this time I'm going to do a lashing weave. I'm going to wrap around the innermost base wire three times. Slip that down a little bit. And around both base wires three times. And around the bottom base wire three times. And around both base wires three times. Then every now and then you just want to make sure you scrunch down the wire. Okay. We're going to start curving this around. This is going to curve around as well. And then we'll have one more shoot off at the end and I'll show you how this will look here in a minute but um, I'm gonna weave a couple more of those I can see I finished the weave here and I've curved it around the swirl here and I'm gonna start curving for it again here I'm gonna create a swirl with this outermost wire here and then this innermost wire I'm gonna coil a little bit more so let's go ahead and grab flush cutters bring that off Grab my round nose pliers and create my little curve. 
or my swirl. Now I'm just going to curl, uh, coil this wire. Anyways. Give myself a little extra weaving wire here. And I'm going to bring that up and then I'm going to um, actually create a loop rather than a actual swirl. Be a little bit more secure, so up about here it's about a quarter of an inch from the coil creating a coil on the end or i mean a loop that's the end there and i'm going to cut my weaving wire so that way i can feed it through when i get to setting the stone and i'm just going to repeat these steps on the opposite side to mirror the opposite side now I'm just feeding some more wire on here. I have coiled three times around the outside wire. And now I'm going to create my triangle V here. It's wrapping three times around the outermost wires. Coming in between those two wires, around the next set of wires three times. Down the next set of wires three times. Doing the descending. base wires three times. I'm going to repeat that and um, we'll, I'll meet you right here at this point on this side. All right, so I've created my other swirl and now I'm going to start my three to weave, I guess. But we're going to do that. I'm going to actually take off this tail piece because it's getting in my way. A little extra weaving wire here. And we're just going to weave around both sets of base wires. So three times around the innermost wire, and under and underneath, around and underneath, around the outer two base wires two times. And around the outer or inner two. Times. I'm just gonna do that a few times so we can bring it around this swirl and then create a loop on the opposite side very swirl on the opposite side like we did on the previous okay. side. So now one wire and we're going to create the lashing weave. So just times around the inner well I guess outermost base wire now. Times and around both base wires three times. need this lashing weave so that way we can bring it around this swirl and create one more swirl and a loop at the end. So here's the back. I finished the back here with all of our swirls, curls, and loops. We have some excess wire so we can secure the stone. But before we secure the main stone, I'd actually like to secure the focal stone first. So I've straightened these wires out and made sure that they're parallel next to each other. And now I'm going to separate them just a tad. Check out my little stone here and see where I want to set it. about there. I'm going to hold that in place while I move these wires over the top like so. Whoops. And this is going to be kind of a finicky part. Um, so just take your time with it. Try not to get too agitated. 
And the bigger the stone, the easier it will be as well to do this. So once I've kind of figured out what the loops are doing, it's back in here. Oops. Or it's in a happy spot. That looks pretty happy to me. Now I'm going to bend the wire up, meeting at the top. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit. So now these are bent up and then we can get ready to set our stone. Um, if you don't have a focal stone or you don't want to set one, maybe um, you're struggling with it and you just kind of want to just do the um, weave part, I recommend... Um, straighten this out and then we'll do a modified sumac leaf and i'll show you how i'm going to do that but rather than setting the stone you would just do it from the start to the finish but with our stone here my weaving wire i wrap three times around the base wire closest to me and I'll scoot it down to the end there it and I'm going to wrap it around both base wires one time bring the wire in between those two base wires and up and around the top base wire one time down and around the bottom base wire one time and then around both base wires and in between those base wires one time up and over down and around the bottom base wire one time, so that's two. And we're just going to go ahead and continue weaving this pattern until we actually reach the back. All right, so I have woven to the end here. I have checked it. It does measure out to there. And now I'm going to finish the weave here by wrapping it around the bottom base wire four times. Then either you can cut the weaving wire or do a twist. At this point, I'm going to grab my little stone, set it in its little setting. Down on the wire. So I set it in there and I'm pushing the wire down. So hopefully it will hold it in. So just a so it's holding my wire. At this point, bring this through, bending it over top of the bale and through the main portion, so through the uh, frame. Something like that. Bring it out, and then I'm going to wrap it so out of the way just a touch. Try not to lose my stone here because it's not quite set. Bring that around, bring that up out of the way. And then bring around this side as well. If you need to use your pliers to make that job easier for you, you can certainly do that. I don't know how long this has been off camera. I'm so sorry. So I brought this around through the frame and around, and I'm just wrapping it back around the outside perimeter one more time. So we have this nice double wrap here. Let me 
And I'm going to trim that off and tuck that in. So doing that on the opposite side as well. Those pliers do that. One side. The other side. Both sides have been tucked in and my stone is set. Double checking my setting though. Don't want that coming out, popping out, and popping loose. All right, so my stone is in there. Everything is secure. So now it's time to set our main stone. So I grab my main stone and shimmy it up in there. And at this point, I'm just kind of feeling out where I need to add wire. So I have the wire here at the bottom. So I'm going to feed that through. And I'm just going to figure out where. Figure, feed it right here through the middle. And sometimes if it's easier to set one part here a little bit first, or um, to remove the stone and then set the wire. One part of the wire, the opposite side as well. Now you can see why this is actually really great for thin stones as well, um, because the thinner the stone, the more it's going to be up against the frame. Um, but what you can do is do basically a figure eight weave at the end. So I, I, that's why I kind of like these loops better than these swirls. Feed it through from underneath. Up and over. Back through. my wire kinks. And then back up under and through the loop. And at this point you can wrap it around the loop a couple times. So it's nice and secure. Once that's wrapped, you can just do a twist. That's now secure. Pull that in a little bit to tighten up the weave. Now we're just going to do the same on the opposite side over here.
and I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below as I try to get to them as quickly as I can. I'd like to extend an invitation to our Facebook group, which is a place where you can share your work, ask questions, and be surrounded by fellow creatives like yourself. You're also invited to join the Learn to Weave newsletter that I send out about once a week just to keep you up to date with what's going on behind the scenes as well as any upcoming sales events and things of that nature. And just a reminder about the Audra Pendant, you get 25% off for the next 24 hours by simply entering code AUDRA25 at checkout. And until next time, happy weaving.